Hi everyone and welcome to another video. I'm Nora Macar and today I'm going to talk about all of the books that I've read in the month of June. Yes, I usually split up my wrap-ups into two, but this time I didn't do it and we're gonna see how that feels, whether it now means that I have way too many things to talk about or whether it actually feels good to just do this once a week. Once a month, I mean. So this is, I think, the stack. Let's start by just mentioning the Invisible Cities books because, as you know, I do a separate video for those. Uh, this was my pick for Lebanon. It is Léon l'Africain, Shiny Shiny, by Amin Malouf. Um, in English, I suppose, the translation would be uh, Léon the African. Uh, and this was my pick for Lebanon. Did I really say that? And yeah, it was meh. And for Mozambique, I actually DNF'd a book, and the other one I read at the beginning of July. Uh, and the book that I DNF'd was Sea Loves Me by Mia Kuto. The only reason I DNF'd it is because it was a short story collection, and I wasn't really in the mindset for that, but I did really like the writing. So the book that I did end up reading for Mozambique was also by that writer. So that leaves us with these. Uh, let's start with the one that I really did not like, and that was The Knife of Lever Go by Patrick Ness. It's the first book of the Chaos Walking trilogy, series, I don't know, and I don't even care to find out. So I got this uh, from a friend who was letting go of the book, and I was interested in it. And I was lucky because she had a very pretty edition. It's a kind of science fiction dystopian thing, so we meet a young boy called, what's his name, Todd, I think. And Todd lives in a village where the people hear the other people's thoughts, and I call that the noise, because you basically have everybody's thoughts the whole time, and it's not only that of people, it's also that of animals. But there are a couple of weird things. Uh, Todd realizes at one point, so his birthday is going to be in a couple of months, the birthday where he will finally become a man and he starts some things, triggers other things, and he starts learning that a lot of the things that he was taught are not true. So, for example, in the village that he lives, there are only men, and he was told that that was because of some strange humanoid creature that uh, killed all the women, and that it is also that same humanoid creature, I think they're called Sparks or Sarks or something like that, uh, that they made sure that there was the noise. Well, spoiler alert, and I really had not seen this coming at all, uh, that is not the case. Anyway, he discovers a thing uh, that does not make any noise. I mean, the thing... So the thing, he can't hear its thoughts, and that really stresses him out, but that triggers a lot of events, and he has to flee the village, etc, etc. I thought this was horrible. I really did not like the writing. I thought all of the things that happened were very, very predictable. Um, I didn't like... I mean, the noise aspect would have been interesting, but even the execution of that, I really hated it. Let me think if I can think of a good thing. I mean, it was easy to read. Um, and there is a dog in there that is a nice character, but even the characters I didn't like. Um, but yeah, no. Honestly, the only reason I finished this is because it was really fast. And I'm sorry if you like this, but if you like this, I want to know why. Uh, then, honestly, we have a couple of books that I really liked. Um, maybe this one being the least. So this is La Mémoire de Babel. Again, shiny. Uh, by Christelle Dabos. It's the third book of the Passe Miroir trilogy. And the, in English would be The Mirror Visitor. And this would translate it to The Memory of Babel. So this is fantasy. And I really like the world building in this world. Uh, so I finally picked up the third volume. It's a world where the initial Earth has been shattered in a couple of arcs, and on each arc there is a family spirit, I think they're called, and each family spirit has a power, and they gave that power to their descendants. And then the, all of the descendants then have kind of different powery things. And there is... Our main character comes from an arc where people have special relationships with objects and she can, when she touches an object, feel all of the thoughts that people have had in the past that have touched that object. And in the first two volumes she's on an arc with people that have more mindy powers and uh, she finds a man, she, she's kind of married off to a man uh, and they discover that there's this whole thing going on in all, the, all of their worlds 
Um, and in this book, she finally goes to another arc, which is interesting because then you finally have some other people with some other powers, and that was the most the thing that I liked most about this book is discovering a little bit more of the world building. Although I will say that it's the kind of book where things that are not necessarily part of the story, they, sh they don't really talk about that. Uh, and that makes the world, on the one hand, feel like there are a lot of options, uh, but it just feels like the author has not filled in those things because she might need them later on as some sort of plot device. And that also makes it feel a little bit shallow somehow and that's a little bit what I had with this book that there were people powers world ideas introduced that I felt were just a mechanism for the plot and not really part of making this world a whole um overall it was for how big the book is uh it was a very quick read I mean at the same time I was reading this one Leon Africa as you can see the size is really different and it took me two times less time to read this than that, although this is twice as big. I won't say more about the book because otherwise I'll probably end up spoiling things from the third, first book. Um, but even in the first volumes I really like the relationships between Ophélie, our main character, and the man that she's been uh, promised to. And in this book I just, I just, I mean I do like the tension between the characters. Uh, but I thought it was completely unrealistic that she was she was kind of waiting for him the whole time and I just want her I wanted to kick her in the butt and say okay if he's treating you the way he's treating you just just say something about it and then, then find something else instead of and don't stop pining after him uh, but I will read the fourth book of this also because I keep liking the covers and then we have uh, The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. Uh, I did a separate video on this one talking about how the book was built up in the sense that Eleanor Catton, what she did is that she looked at the sky at certain t periods of time and then depending on the position of the constellations and the planets, she linked all the constellations and planets to character and that is how she decided what the plot, how the plot would be so that character would have something to do with that character. Um, so I talk about that in another video, but as for the book itself, so I buddy read this with um, Natalie, the curious reader, uh, which was really nice. We kind of read a hundred pages each week, which was good because this is a chunker and I was kind of not looking at it. Uh, so it was really good to read it and it was really nice to discuss it every week because this is a mystery historical fiction in 1866 in New Zealand. It's in a world where uh, people mainly went to New Zealand to find some gold and find riches and everything and uh, it's very much a man's world and there's a lot of tension because obviously when one person will find gold the others will be jealous so there's... people don't tend to trust one another and one man turns up dead and there are 12 men that either can be accused of a death or can be excused of profiting from his death or have some other link to him. Um, and they kind of want to meet up in this hotel to discuss, first of all, all the collective knowledge that they have about this whole situation and many of the things that are linked to this death. And there they uh, meet Walter Moody, who's kind of sort of a protagonist? the closest thing we could have to protagonist because we, we follow all of these different characters um, and it turns out that he also kind of has knowledge that links into this whole mystery so the first I think nearly half of the book is just us discovering all of the things that happened prior to the night of the murder or at least prior to the this body being found um, and that part is very confusing because you have all of these characters, you have the 12 that are involved and that was ha were having this secret meeting when Walter Moody showed up, you have Walter Moody himself, you have other characters that are either the dead man or other people that we don't really know a lot of, and there are a lot. Uh, when I was reading this in the beginning I took notes, which was very helpful because, so I had this sticky note, at least it helped me to make sense of all of the characters and it really felt like a very long setup of the actual book. Uh, I was happy when it was done to be honest. I liked having that the whole situation being set up in a very slow way. It, it really does bring something. You, you know that everything is really 
thought out in the author's mind, so that was really nice. Um, and then the second half of the book, once this setup has been done, goes really fast. Uh, it's just like, oh, this happens, oh, that happens, oh, this happens. Um, and as you already know the characters by that point, um, it kind of it kind of speeds things up and it made for a very interesting second half of the book. And then we arrive at the last 100 pages or so and those are just so disappointing. Then everything felt like a very good build up and then just not having that, you know, last part to really make it click, really make it good. Uh, I did like the twists and turns. I liked that it's not in mystery that has a lot of tension, but it's mostly about all of these characters. I really like that. Uh, I thought the world also, seeing having a glimpse of this 19th century uh, New Zealand and the gold mines was interesting. Also, especially how rough they are, all these men, the way they talk about women is horrible. The men they talk about, um, the indigenous people is as you might imagine, and the way they talk also about uh, the Chinese people that work there, there are two, they're called Chinamen, uh, is also, I mean, it's very, um, it really shows how it was at that point, just the, the plain racism, the way people feel superior, the way that's in everything was, uh, was well done. So I would recommend this. It's the kind of book that uh, you can really enjoy for a long while and uh, the characters are all... I know because there's so much of so many of them you don't really get bored of them. At least that's how I felt. Although I will say there are parts where it's slow. Uh, one of the books that I listened to was The Ghost Bride by Yang Si Chu. It's a fantasy historical fiction magic realism I think we could say. It's set in Malaga decades ago. So in this book we meet Li Lang. She's um, the daughter of a Chinese family that used to be well off but now has a lot of debts. Uh, they live in Malaysia and uh, one way for her family to lose their debts, well mostly her father because he's an opium addict, uh, is for her to marry a dead man. Uh, in Chinese culture the afterlife is uh, still of important things and people that are dead also still need a spouse in the afterlife so it happens that sometimes two people that are dead who did not have a spouse uh, will be married off together uh, or sometimes even one live person would be married to a dead person and that is kind of what happens in this book but um, she's still very much alive but in her dreams her sort of fiance because she hasn't agreed to anything she doesn't want this to happen uh, but he starts talking to her, uh, he starts telling her about that he's not supposed to be dead, that someone kind of murdered him, and that someone is of course the man that she's starting to fall in love with. Um, anyway, she does not like this at all and she tries to make sure that he cannot disturb her dreams and in while doing that something happens and then she ends up not being dead but not being alive either and she can also go into the world, into the afterworld. She can see ghosts, she can talk to people that have been dead and that is how we discover this afterworld um, and she discovers more about the mystery surrounding this man's death. There are a lot of things that tie into it because uh, the politics of the after afterworld start playing a role and that's also very interesting. Um, I really liked her voyage to and in the afterworld. Uh, that was, it was, you know, it's an interesting way to learn about another culture's to me and other cultures belief systems. I will say sometimes the plot felt a little bit messy that it felt like us discovering this part of Chinese culture was the main point of the book and the plot was just a way to have us move through things and see certain areas or, or whatnot um, and I found the world more interesting than was happening to the characters. I was still interested in the characters but not necessarily the plot part of it, if that makes sense. I liked the people and the world and not necessarily what was happening to them. The whole mystery of who killed what's his face, didn't really care for that. Uh, but yeah, this was a very good book. I really enjoyed learning about these cultures that way. Um, so if you have any other books that resemble this, please let me know because I really liked it. Now with my book club, we read uh, The Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. Uh, I listened to this on audio and kind of bought it directly afterwards because I liked it. It's dystopian science fiction 
And so people have been talking about Octavia E. Butler for a while now. Uh, this book was written in 93, and from what I understand, this book and Kindred and so, they have been... People have been talking about them and being happy about them, but I wasn't... I was never attracted to them. Um, so when my book club chose this book, I was a little bit apprehensive. Uh, but boy, am I glad that we read this. Uh, I really like this. So, uh, so this is set in what then was the future, far away future. What for now is a couple of years away in 90, in 2025, I believe. So in this world, in America, uh, there is a lot of violence. There is a lot of chaos. And our main character, uh, Lauren Olamina, uh, she kind of lives in a community that is walled off. That is the only way for them to survive. Um, in this chaos, violency world where basically you can have enough food, but you need a weapon blah 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 and her community is ripped apart everything is burned down and she has to go away to find a better place now Lauren Olamina is there are kind of two things that make her interesting in this book and that kind of drive the plot forward and that is one she is what is called a sharer so uh, sharing is uh, when people when they see someone else hurting feel the same pain that has positive, well, not only pain, also pleasure. Um, she, and she's kind of keeping that secret from everybody but her family because it can use against her. In this world where when you go outside, you need guns and you see a lot of people suffering, knowing that you, a weakness of yours is that you will be delimited by the same pain uh, can be very much used against you and the group that you are a part of. So for that reason, she's keeping that secret. Uh, and the other thing is that she kind of is building up in her mind, in her writing, a different religion, a different belief system called Earthseed. Uh, where um, the premise of that religion is that God has changed and everything is supposed to change the whole time. And the way you deal with everything is just to accept the change, drive the change and stuff like that. So when she starts going north, because in this world she lives in, she used to live in California, I believe. Um, but climate change has made the south super hot, no water. Uh, so she kind of go, tries to go north. And as she goes, she collects other people around her. So she starts off with two people that were also from her community. They believe that they're the three only survivors. And as they go along, other people join them. And she... Because of her aura, she's only 18, but because of this this way she thinks, because she's a very smart person, because she believes in sharing knowledge, uh, she kind of becomes their leader. And this book is about them traveling through this world and kind of her talking about her, her sharing and uh, earth, sea and stuff like that. The things that I liked in this book is, first of all, the diversity. I think the way that uh, race and class is part of the world, is part of also what makes people bigger targets, uh, was very well done, very, very realistic. Uh, I think that this future is very much a possibility where the government doesn't really doesn't necessarily help out its people anymore, but that everything is kind of corrupt. There's also a very interesting drug in this book where people just go cuckoo crazy and set everything on fire. This kind of world where, because it is something that I believe is very much possible for us, makes it fascinating. You really, it really makes you, first of all, be completely afraid of all of the rapes and all of the things. Uh, this is not necessarily an easy read. It's not very uh, descriptive, but I mean, there are still bad things happening. A lot of people die. I think my main negative with this book is that a lot of the things that happen were very, very handy. Somehow, every time someone joins the group, um, they click with another person and they they're, they're just happen to be all couples. Uh, they happen to find this thing that happens to save them for that. It's a little bit too handy. Not in a they are surviving way, but more in a yeah, but you found that and well, you happen to have a good shot in your group and stuff like that. Um, it didn't bother me per se and more afterwards I thought, okay, but this was just, this was just bad plot. Um, but I was enthralled into the world enough for this to be interesting. The second book is the 
Parable of the Talents and I started reading that yesterday on audio um, and that is where you realize that this book is mostly a setup for the second book. Unfortunately this is supposed to be part of a trilogy and Octavia E. Butler uh, passed away after the second book so there is no third but, but from what I've heard the second one is still very good to read so um, that's why I kind of started it directly. Yeah. Very good book, I really like this, and I might pick up Kindred at one point. Uh, so I think this is the last book I want to talk about. I f also feel like I'm kind of, I kind of lost one book. So this is a Dutch book called Confrontaties by Simona Atanga Bekono, and it was shortlisted for a big Dutch prize, which, to be honest, I think it should have won. It's a Dutch prize where they want one of the things is that they want young people to read again, blah blah blah, make sure that literature does not have this stuffy image that it has, and then they ended up giving the prize basically as a prize for someone's oeuvre and not necessarily the book to this very old white man that makes literature that is just so difficult to read. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, maybe, probably the book is good, it's very possible, but it just clashes with what you say your goal was. So this is very good. It's about the 16-year-old Salome Atabong, and she is sent off to a detention center because she's done something. Apparently she's hurt people, we don't really know what happened. Um, and this is partly about her life in this detention center with other kids that are either racist or either are sharing her past. Uh, it's about her relationship with a therapist that is a racist and how she's like, but how can you want me to grow if you have someone that views me this way? She has so much anger uh, and you learn why this anger is about all the stuff that happens to her at school, about the way that her father is treated. Uh, slowly but surely you discover also what she's done. Um, it's a really good book because it's written in a very simple way, it's very effective. There are not many descriptions, but the emotions of the main character just come through very well. Just this her being confused, angry, wanting to do better, wanting to not be a problem, but also just having all of this bottled up anger. And while I think the book ended on a very good thing, uh, I also would love to spend more time with these people because uh, at the end of the book she kind of goes back home again, her time in the detention center is up and I would love to see how the rest of the situation develops. Uh, yeah, I really like this one and I think it's very important to have more of these books where you see a child that is just super intelligent and that is put into the detention center as a result of things that happened to her and not her being the bad guy. So yeah, brilliant, really, really like this. Uh, it's not translated, it just came out a couple of months ago. So hey, you're gonna have to learn Dutch. So yeah, those were all of the books I think I read last month. As I said, I believe, I have this feeling I'm missing one, but I have no idea what that one would be. It was a good reading month, I mean, except for the big disappointment that was this thing, and I'm kind of okay with hating. I also finished this chunker, which was very nice, and I mean, this was very good, this was very good, I really like The Ghost Bride, uh, even this was very entertaining, I mean, it's good to have, you know, this this big book that you can just binge read. Um, so yeah, a good reading month. Uh, I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye!